can't hear my music here. You're listening to the MLS Fantasy Insider, bringing you weekly tips, tricks, and advice for the official MLS Fantasy game. Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. A little bit different setup going on. Uh, Lady Boss uh, needs uh, some help tonight, and so I am going to be up there helping her. Uh, but we've got Brandon and Ashley with you who are going to be keep, keeping things together. Ashley's going to be running the show, uh, but I did just want to jump in here real quick at the beginning to let you all know what was going on before I go off camera. So in good hands i must say uh the social is out on the discord and on twitter uh, always appreciate people sharing those if this is the first time you're joining us uh thank you for joining us uh, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel we come to you live pretty much every monday unless something crazy happens um like almost tonight but it's good we still got we still got coverage so it's okay um uh, but we're here giving you just just information about the MLS Fantasy game, and so happy for you to be part of our little niche community if you're joining us for the first time. So uh, you should be in for a wild ride. Great group with you that I'm leaving you with, so I know you're in good hands. Uh, so with that said, I will go off camera. I will mute myself so as not to, I guess I'll just, I'll leave it open because that'll mess with the... Uh, That'll, that'll mess with things with because I did hit the recorded button, guys. Don't worry. I know you did. I, I saw did. it. I hit the we recorded recorded. button. So we're all good. <laughs> the Excited to, to hear everything. So I will leave it over to you all. Take it, Ashley. You got it. Ooh. I like that. Oh. Yeah, nice. that's very smooth. All right. <laughs> we're going to do this awkward thing now where I talk like we haven't been talking the whole time. And everyone will just laugh along with us. You good, Brandon? Yeah. Y'all ready? What is this chat? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello and welcome to MLS Fantasy Insider, our preview of round six of the 2024 MLS Fantasy season. This episode is brought to you by New York Red Bulls Divorce Lawyers. Just kidding, kidding, kidding. It's actually brought to you by our amazing MLSFI Patreon supporters. It's because of your support that we're able to keep this project going. Uh, I am your host tonight, Ashley Savage. Our MLS Fantasy boss is taking the night off, and I'm so pleased to welcome our special guest, Brandon. Uh, if you don't know Brandon, you do know Brandon from Discord, um, and I'm really <laughs> excited to have him here. He's been contributing to our differentials. He's been behind the scenes with so much stat work, um, and so I'm really excited to welcome you to the show tonight, Brandon. Thank you, Ashley, and thank you, Reed, who's well, technically not here, but... yeah. He's here in so. spirit, yes. Yeah. Um, all is well in the Fantasy Boss household. He just needed to take some family time tonight, uh, and he will be back with us next week. I want to remind everybody before we get into our recap of this upcoming round, that this upcoming round, or sorry, of the previous round, that this upcoming round is our last round before the Champions League first window cuts off. So Champions League first window is one through six, so this is your last little push if you're uh, on the bubble or right inside and if not don't worry you get three more tries so yeah uh when let's get into let's get into our previous round round five brandon what that look like for you uh so this is a decent decent week uh take the big one in lewis morgan uh shout out to differentials article there threw, we go yeah threw him in there and uh Learned my lesson from not taking Christian Benteke week one, even though I was the one who put him in the article. <laughs> so <laughs> we're making good on that hat trick by taking this one, which, you know, gets us there to a 78. Um, bit of a slow start for me this season, so um, st still trying to figure out what the new uh, scoring system is and how to make uh, inroads on that. But um, transfer value up to 115, which makes for some fun budget picks always. And uh, Noir, which is at least going upwards and not downwards. <laughs> yeah, it's good to trend. Uh, and what are some thoughts that you that you have and some players that might have, that impressed you in this past round? Um, Philadelphia, for one, I think, um, mm -hmm. you know, as they get back from Champions Cup, uh, the demolishing by Pachuca notwithstanding, yeah. um, 
they seem to be recovering pretty quickly from from all jet lag and, and the travel and all that um mm -hmm. at least more so than some of the non or some of the other um non contenders as we move into the quarterfinals next week mm -hmm. um but yeah um, so philadelphia for one and then um you know really it something interesting last week i think was orlando um granted it's austin and yeah austin fans can crucify me for that one but <laughs> uh finding out that lodero and ojeda can play together and both score big um that was a big one for me just moving forward knowing that there might be some additional floor points there um cole bassett another one who continues to quietly tick along and that's a shout out to to matt in the differentials article for having him last week and then yeah i don't know um over to you, I guess. <laughs> sure, no problem. Yeah, um, I had a decent week. Um, I I scored a ninety three. I guess that's like bit being too humble. I apologize. That's obnoxious <laughs> of me. Uh, I had a ninety three without Lewis Morgan points, which is something cool. I will be less humble about. I I feel the need to throw that out there. We had talked a little bit off air where I liked the Lewis Morgan shout but it wasn't something I had tinkered into my team, if that makes sense. Like, I, there wasn't really a name that I felt comfortable swapping out. But it doesn't surprise me at all that he hit like that. It surprised me a little bit how well Red Bull did against Miami in that game, yeah. even though that Miami lineup was was obviously a little altered. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I was very impressed with, with Lewis Morgan, obviously. What a great performance from him. Um, no, 93 for me. My overall ranking moved up to... 22, which is one of the better, I've definitely the best start that I've ever had. I am a late riser. I've never, you know, in the last four or five years, I don't think I've ended higher than like 55, but I take my time to get there. And so this season is very uncomfortable for me to kind of be in a familiar place, but be there at the wrong time. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, creep, creeping up. Uh, I won all my head-to-heads. Shout out to Wojo, who was on last week. Uh, he and I had each other in a host invitational, and I beat him by one. Literally, I think <laughs> Jovalich on my bench was the was the one-point differential for us. So um, credit to him. That's the guest host curse. I hope it doesn't happen to you, Brandon, but um, uh -huh. it, does, it does tend to happen from time to time. Uh, total value, I moved up to 20, uh, sorry, 124 and a half, oh. which is crazy for someone who's not – intently focusing on price rise i talked about this a little bit last week uh it, it, how a player is trending will kind of dictate whether i choose them does that make sense right like yeah uh i talked about i'll get into this in a second too because it was a player from last week for me but uh mm -hmm. i talked about picking up san jose defenders who were trending up instead yeah. do you know what I mean? instead of the really like defenders. as well yeah and so uh that particular defender did well for me <laughs> uh -huh. um but the san jose defense did not you know costa scoring was was what helped uh but that was why i picked him i went costa over rodriguez because costa was trending up financially and i wanted to try to catch a price rise right yeah. um i snagged sb which was another pick that i was worried people were gonna hear from me and then wasn't gonna pan out <laughs> but he did with a nine that was great and I never didn't have Denis Bawanga in my team. I think that was one that some people were quick to fade, and I definitely understood because he hasn't been consistently producing. But Denis Bawanga at home, you know, that's just kind of a, a fixture-proof thing for me for, for most of the time. He's just, you know, he'll, he'll pop out a couple twos and threes on the road or in a weird game, but Denis Bawanga at home is, is in my lineup most of the time. So... Uh, I don't think he was as widely owned as he should have as he should have been, but that's that's fine. It helped me. Um, yeah, I think. And then go ahead. No, I was just gonna say I, I think the uh, the RSL game off the top of the season, mm -hmm. the snow one really. It was a snow for... game, right? I mean, who yeah. can take that seriously? <laughs> not I, you know, that's not well, something like, that I'm holding against him, but yeah, but I get no, it. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. And so LAFC haven't looked quite themselves yet so far this season agree. either, right? And so completely that... completely agree. We're all just trying to catch a hat trick in a bottle, yeah. you know? And so <laughs> this was uh this was Denis Bolonga's version of a hattie with, you know, two goals and an assist. So uh he like I said, he was kind of a no brainer for me on on my team. And then 
The other player I just kind of wanted to shout out that uh, I think it was Tyler, and I apologize if it wasn't or was, uh, last week indicating that Jovalich was not getting enough enough play uh, on, on the podcast. I've had him almost every week. I think the only week I didn't have him was week one. And this man just broke, sorry, tied an MLS record of scoring <laughs> in the first five games of the season. Jovalich yeah. has scored every game. There has yet to be a game where that man has not scored. He hasn't left my team. He hasn't left my team since week two. So some of that is the production that LA Galaxy as an offense has been doing. Put Peck in there, paint still all of that. Uh, and he's definitely benefiting from it. But he's getting a bonus point here or there, and he's scoring a goal. So, <laughs> yes, definitely – a player that was and again you know he he just had an eight but still he scored a goal and yeah. i if i look at the math like i said i think that is what helped me win a one point slimmest head-to-head -head against wojo so uh i'll i'll keep you over around for a little while and then i want to shout out um uh, marshall ruddy from toronto posting a nine with a shutout uh that was someone that i think flew a little under the radar maybe not completely Toronto defense who i'll talk about shortly yeah. has not flown under the radar. If they have, yeah. your radar's <laughs> off. But uh, having him come into more of a starting role was something I was definitely hoping for as he plays a little out of position. Not a full out of position, but a little out of position for where he is in the game. So it was nice to see him pick up some bonus points, and he had a point correct to a nine. I think he ended on an eight, and they point corrected to a nine. So that was nice to see. Um, some general thoughts from me. I can't believe I'm going to say this, and I'm sure they'll turn it around in a negative way once I do, but <laughs> Toronto is a viable defense, man. I know. Right? Like, what Toronto is it? Is a, Toronto is oh, a viable defense. That's probably the answer. Yeah. <laughs> Toronto is a viable defensive option. I know for a lot of people, Govern has been a, a price-rising keeper. Not sure how long he stays in. I think there's maybe only another round before Sean John comes back, but still – has been a viable price wise option. They've kept a very decent amount of shutouts, more than most teams, maybe all. So Toronto defense is definitely wor worth taking seriously. Uh, another team to take seriously that I didn't necessarily, I, I kind of expected going into the season, but I didn't think they would look as nice as they have looked, which is LA Galaxy. LA Galaxy yeah. offense is really coming together. Really, it was just Puj last year to select from, from a fantasy perspective, right? I don't mean to belittle what they're doing, but there wasn't a lot going on. Jovalic would come in off the bench, so who's picking him up, you know? Chicharito always hurt and not really producing even when he wasn't. So it's really nice to see, uh, you know, conversations of, well, are you going Payne Stoller? Are you going Puj? And what about once Peck gets back? You know, all these yeah, things. Exactly. And so they're really producing in a way – that I think you would expect from an LA Galaxy team, but we haven't seen in quite some time. And so uh, that's definitely another, I guess, surprise of consistency for me. Um, on the downside, I don't know what's happening with Carlos Heel. Two weeks in a row now, that's a trend. I'll take that as a trend. I think he was on a lot of people's teams. He was in my midfield for sure. Yeah. But the revolution as a team, and you know, we try to stay fantasy focused, but I do think that team play or MLS play can factor into fantasy production and the revolution just looked lost. And so even he doesn't seem able to kind of steer that ship right now. And I am surprised that he's not picking up some of these bonus points that we've seen other players like him pick up. Um, and yeah, and, uh, not to cut you off there, but no, yeah, go like, for it. I would say that the lack of a real nine, I mean, yep. yes, technically Rioni exists, but mm -hmm. If he's getting a red card every other game, that sure Does he? as heck doesn't help them. Yeah. <laughs> if a striker gets a red card every game, is he a striker? Uh, so, yeah, he'll, he'll was a disappointment for me. Uh, I'll go ahead and, and echo Christian here and say I blame Caleb Porter because I don't yeah. really like Caleb Porter, so I'm happy to have somebody to blame. Also, sure. two, two teams that are not <laughs> tr trending in a good way from a fantasy production or a playing production are the Whitecaps and the Sounders. The Whitecaps are not producing the way that I think a lot of us thought that they would right now. Mm -hmm. I saw some Raposo out of positions in some teams this past week. Gauld was given a shout by some people, not really producing to his expectations. 
there's not a single player on that Seattle Sounders team that I would want to pick up right now, especially with another road game to California. So those are two teams that I think, you know, at the start of the season, and especially if you look at the end of last season, there are some good fantasy options there. Right now, those are two teams that I'm, you know, not particularly touching. The goals have come from mostly penalties. So yeah. I guess if you want to throw a cheap striker on your bench, Rui Diaz, because he's the one that takes the penalties. <laughs> but that's not much of a lock. It's not like, do you remember when Zlatan was with the Galaxy? Yeah. And you could bank that that, that guy would draw <laughs> and score penalties. Like, he did it so regularly so, I know. that you could bank on it. I don't feel like that about Rui Diaz. But he's he's two in a row, so I guess I shouldn't belittle him too much but generally the caps and the sounders are are two teams that i'm not touching and this this round emphasized that to me even more so it's uh your your old school chad barrett coming off the bench and scoring every other game but who's yes. taking chad barrett off the bench yes exactly <laughs> for the mls throwback there <laughs> yes uh to throw some uh some points out for reed who you know like i said is is unfortunately not leading us tonight everyone's stuck with me and my umming Reed posted a 76. He didn't feel great about it. He flubbed his third forward. Cucho underperformed, which I think happened to a lot of us. Four points is underperforming for Cucho, I think. Um, actually, yeah. I know. And then not a subpar bench. Reed said he had a mixed bag with his head-to-heads. 70s, and he should have seen some more gains. Uh, and then he said something disparaging about me, which I won't read. Uh, his thoughts on this past round were that once again, we've seen a forward be the best captain of the round, but however, he's wrong. Cause it was Lewis Morgan who oh, yeah. is a midi, uh, Denis Bawanga is I think who he was referencing. And yeah, we have had a lot of strikers be the, the player of the round, but Lewis Morgan took that from, from Denis by a couple points, I think. Yep. So, I mean, Reed and I are, are cut from a similar cloth. I don't know how you are, Brandon, where... I am always hesitant to captain a forward, even a Cucho, even a Chicho, even a Denis Bawanga. It has to be something I feel like is just the odds of them messing it up are so low. Where do you sit? But now in this new scoring system, I don't know that it's fair to say it favors forwards because it doesn't favor all forwards. But it is clear the type of forwards that it, it has been favoring with a lot of in the box key passes or forwards who also assist, which isn't all of them. Where do you lie? Free these rule changes and currently on captaining forwards. So traditionally, I would have gone always, or well, not 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 truly always, but you know, nine times out of ten, be a four midfielder who gets bonus points. So mm -hmm. you know, your Puigs, your well, Puj, got to get that one down. Um, your Pujes, your your Luchos, uh, your Armadas, your 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 prototypical number tens. I would say sure. Um, yeah, but really under the new system, and, and it's good that you mentioned key passes earlier because, again, that's a bit of a misnomer, really. Um, and it's something that I've brought up in the Discord as well, but key passes aren't truly key passes under the new system. Um, there are some, some behind-the-scenes uh, action happening with uh, what counts as a quote-unquote key pass, which does yeah. include things like dribbles and take-ons and potentially even fouls um, if it leads to a shot on goal. So... Um, that's how you end up with, you know, your Luchos getting 19 key passes in a single game, which right. averages out to what? Like, one yeah. every 90 seconds? Exactly. Mm -hmm. You have <laughs> Something refresh silly like that. and those points go up. Yep. Yeah. One every, one every two minutes, I guess. Can't do my mental math. One every four minutes. Anyways, it's a really stupid rule. <laughs> stupid rate <laughs> that, they're, they're, that they're getting them on. So, yes. um, you know, to that end, you... you Again, you nat naturally gravitate towards them. Um, if you captain Lewis Morgan last round, which I noticed, I think week round or yeah, week rank two did, but week rank one did not, which is yeah. also an interesting fact. Um, again, you benefit from the hat trick, but uh, the underlying numbers don't necessarily support that being a sure. good quote unquote captain pick. Um, under the old system, so again, you're really relying on capturing, and I really like that saying that you had earlier, cap capturing the hat trick in a bottle, because that yeah. is essentially how to pick a captain this season, and it's <laughs> sure. that's what happens that strikers are 
more often than not predisposed to get those goals. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, it's their job. Yeah. Yeah. So if they do their do their job good, you have good captain. Yep. That yep. makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll see how how this continues to evolve. And right now, we'll take a quick break, and we'll be back for our housekeeping section. Now I'm gonna type housekeeping in all caps so everybody knows, because I don't want anyone to be confused. Uh, okay, let me pull up. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you for the notes. I have yes, them. I appreciate you. On nineteen, not Lutro. <laughs> Sorry, I have a cough no, all of a sudden. You're okay. <laughs> all right. Welcome back to the MLS Fantasy Insider Podcast. We are going to get into some housekeeping details. And I'm not going to lie to you, without my boss here, I am not going to update you on any of the leagues. And wherever you're at, <laughs> you're doing a great job. And I want you they to keep exist. trying and keep going and know that there's a whole new round this week. So whether you're at the top or the bottom, you got a whole new shot at it this week. Congratulations to you. Uh, this upcoming round, the start time day if you will is saturday march 30th at 2 p.m eastern standard time i do that math every week myself and i'm not gonna lie to you those three hours are tricky uh reed usually is here to correct me but i did it right so we're okay uh the first match of the round is philadelphia versus minnesota that is our early game if you will that is your players to see if they hit on the bench game if you will there are no double game weeks, and I see New England as our buy team. If there's another buy team and I missed it, apologies. Again, I'm working without a supervisor. New and England so is we're, correct. We're just getting through what we can. Uh, CONCACAF Nations League is over. There are some considerations to note that Champions Cup does start back next week. Will we see some players rested? I don't know. It's hard to say. I kind of don't think so, but... Perhaps, but it's just something to, to keep in mind for a few of the teams. There are still some European international games being played tomorrow. Yep. And so all of the players in the CONCACAF, the CONCACAF players should have already been returned or returning today. The European players might not travel home until Wednesday, maybe Thursday. So that's something to factor in. Some of these players might not even be starters for our MLS team. Some of them might be Denis Bawangas and they don't believe in jet lag and can just <laughs> bounce right back in. So it's just something else to note when you're looking at lineups. As far as injuries, suspensions, thank you again to Tyler for getting this to me as I'm not usually the one that does it and he is so diligent in helping. Some noticeable, to call it a return is inadequate, but that's what I'll call it. Jonathan Rodriguez for Portland gets signed, starts, scores a goal. Something to take note of, even though I don't want to. It's very important. Uh, yeah. Derek Jones for Columbus, <laughs> red card, turf monster in Charlotte, got him. He'll be missing this week. Joe Willis, red card, feisty little goalkeeper, red card. As a former goalkeeper, I should dislike it more, but I kind of love to see it when keepers get these reds. Game he misses a season two. Exactly. Miss one early. Uh, some key injuries, Chase Gasper for Chicago, Hurt, Rudy Camacho for Columbus, Christian Ramirez for Columbus. So again, turf, turf strikes twice, thrice, really. Yeah. Got Arfield for Charlotte, who's a name, I'm not going to lie to you, I don't even know. So if he's in your team, that's a deep, deep differential. Yeah. For uh, Risa for NYCFC, which is a name a lot of us should be used to by now. Shane O'Neill. Has a lower leg injury for Toronto. Has been a pretty key figure in that, as we said, pretty consistent back line so far this season. Insigne for Toronto, also a hamstring. So Toronto shaking it up a little bit as far as injuries for the week. And I know, like I said previously, we, we talked them up. And I'm not going to talk them down. But I, <laughs> I will say that missing both Shane O'Neill and Insigne, when they've already had a pretty big list of injuries, is something to take into consideration for this round. So speaking of... Home, though. Exactly. Yes. Uh, and speaking of taking things into consideration for this round, Brandon, let's move right into our player picks. Yeah. And who are you... Oops, nope, nope. Because I'm supposed to break. Yeah. 
and yeah. Wade's gonna get mad at <laughs> it's me. Just what I say. <laughs> this is what he gets mad at me about when I'm in charge as the not breaking. So instead, what I'm gonna say is we're gonna take a quick break and then we're gonna talk who we like this week. Tyler, I hear you about the Forsberg stuff. However, it was already our brought to you by. I guess I wasn't as clear about what that was, but yeah. I can't think that. Uh, so I don't know who's the social media. Who's the Galaxy player whose wife was racist and then he didn't play and they sold him out? Do you remember what I'm talking about? Yes. Uh... <laughs> That's not the same as a wife being mad and posting about divorce. I cannot think that this is going to impact his playing time. Do you? I yeah I I think. If you're going to be concerned about it, you probably are looking at his performance more than him starting, not starting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I don't see a if world you... in which he doesn't, considering sure. Sure. also the Van Zier the news last you, year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you read the post, you know that he's pretty emotionally disconnected from the whole situation. Anyways, that's her whole bit. So. so I can't imagine. Anyways, that's a great note, Tyler. You're right. I should Alexander probably... Katai, that's the one that you were thinking yes, of. Yes, yes. I probably should have brought it up in injuries, but it felt like gossip, so I didn't want to. But thank you, Tyler, for your diligence. Okay. Now I'm going to do the vampy thing that Reed does. Did I type player picks already? Nope. Why did I type this? Welcome back to MLS Fantasy Insider. I'm Ashley Savage, still joined by Brandon, and we are here to tell you who we think maybe we'll get a hat trick this week. I'm kidding. <laughs> We're just going to talk to you about the players that we want to have in our lineups. So as we get going from that back line, Brandon, who are some goalkeepers and defenders that you like the most? As I was going to say, I'd be very surprised if one of these defenders or goalkeepers got a hat trick. Although, again, now remembering last year when Juan Jose Peralta scored three headers against Toronto, maybe that's not as unlikely as I like to think it is. Um, but, I mean, we'll start in Toronto, co coincidentally. Um same note that you've made down below, riding the hot hand, it has to be Gavin and Net on the front mm -hmm. end of the of the keeper roof, um, or at least that's how I'm going. See no signs at all that, you know, why you shouldn't move away from Gavron. And honestly, mm -hmm. even if Sean John comes back a week early, he's almost a similar price, seven yeah. million. So, um, if you're still so inclined, you could probably take the step up there. Um, the back end is going to be for me McMath or McCarthy um, John McCarthy in LA for the Galaxy um, again it, that's just picking on Seattle sorry <laughs> um, I know that some people will probably look at him and say that you could probably get a third Galaxy outfield player as well um, so that's the other reason why I have McMath as my other option but McCarthy uh is 4.9 so if i'm not mistaken the cheapest starting keeper in the game right now um so if you're like me and playing a bit of the budget game uh there's a cheap option on the back end for you um and then zach mcmath being at home again against our uh, against st louis sorry um 9 30 game so again he's one of those late options that probably will do better than other late options uh at the back um Defenders in a very sort of similar vein. Um, again, Brooks Lennon at the back. Um, mm -hmm. Trustable as always, I think, for me. Um, yep. Bodhi Hidalgo was one that I caught last week out of position, and Tyler did as well. Um, so shout out to him on that one. Um, is technically a natural right back for Real Salt Lake, but um, a couple of years ago played... Uh, a string of games at right mid for their then USL championship team. Now their MLS, MLS next pro team in the real monarchs. So um, has that experience at both right back and right wing um, pushes way up. So potential for attacking returns. And then again, very similarly to you, uh, JMR at the back, Shaquille Marshall ready. Um, that's again, just picking on Toronto or picking with Toronto against or in Kansas City, um, another one of those wing backs that pushes high up the field, so um, has a chance for attacking returns plus the chance for the clean sheet. Um, the one outfield or well outfield outfield pick, 
I don't quite know how to go about that. Um, the one out there pick, I'll say, uh, for me this week is Orlando. Um, some people will look at me and have some crazy eyes because they're playing the Red Bulls. But um, I think for me, the thing you have to remember is Red Bulls last week were playing a Miami team who were both injured and missing some players due to international duty. Correct. Um, so, and also playing away, which although um, Red Bull doesn't seem to be as affected by the home and away um, as some other teams, at least historically speaking, um, mm-hmm. Orlando having kept the clean sheet against Austin last week uh, gives me a little bit of hope there. Plus, uh, Kyle Smith is again 4.6. So, um, again, another ridiculously cheap option, all things considered, with you know a half clean sheet chance, if not. Which... And Kyle Smith, if I believe correctly, is actually playing in as a defensive midfielder, right? If yes. their defensive midfielder is hurt, uh, that w- is my understanding. I believe so, yeah, because Cesar Araujo is out. Mm-hmm. And Dagger would slot in at right back. Um, but yeah, that's it. again and, and sort of with the Dogger chain there. Um, he's had two big games for Orlando at home this season, yep. so um, another one against the Red Bulls, who, although they'll be getting a lot of pieces back, um, yeah. it's almost an interesting thought because of how Morgan's done better without Forsberg, whether. That's now a too many cooks in the kitchen situation in, for the Red Bulls, where um, they might be not so, not necessarily getting in each other's way, but um, there's I think potential there for sure. you know quarter of a clean sheet, half a clean sheet chance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, yeah. Given how the game goes these days. Honestly, I wouldn't even be surprised if they did keep a clean sheet because that's just how this game seems to throw sure. clean sheets at us now. Sure, yeah. True. Just loosely and unpredictably. Yeah. I uh, I have definitely some overlap with you, so I'll try to kind of expand and definitely share some picks that I saw in chat. I like Gavron, again, like you said, quoting me, riding the hot hand. I think that he's done well enough to keep him in there. Six six million is is still a great price. I think you could yeah. get some other keepers at a similar price, but such a cheap price, and he's gonna rise without a clean sheet, I believe, based on how that math maths. So that's important still for a lot of people. I'm actually looking at some different back end keepers. I'm looking at I can't even believe I'm gonna say it. Brad Guzan. <laughs> Or Steve Clark. I know. <laughs> Brad Guzan feels like a joke. And uh, honestly, it might be. I might not even be able to pull the trigger on it. I just do kind of like Atlanta's clean sheet chances in that game at home. But I don't like Brad Guzan. So we'll see how that pans out. And, I mean, if I get to Sunday, I'm not picking a Chicago game, but I don't have another choice, right? Yeah. So I'm kind of hoping that Gavron hits and I don't need to make that decision. However, I'm also leaning towards Houston and Steve Clark. I like Steve Clark more i like the atlanta back end matchup better does that make sense so yeah we'll see where i land on that i also like jay marshall ruddy for toronto if he starts again great like i said great bonus point production ended on nine for last round again not fully playing out of position but getting up if you've ever heard me talk about defenders at any point on this podcast at nauseum i talk about wing backs <laughs> and he fills that role i like him I'm also looking at Brooks Lennon for the same reasons that you are. The bonus point production, the possible clean sheet. I also like Hidalgo out of position. I'm kind of a sucker for out of position. You, again, usually to a fault, but I, I, he's a cheaper RSL defender. I do like RSL defense this, this week. I think there's a couple that you could go with from that RSL backline, but he's who I'm currently slotting in. And then I do like Kai Wagner probably as a bench play. He is expensive. I'm not going to act, you know, like he's like he's not. He's 7.1, which for defenders is still a little pricey. It's less expensive than Brooks Lennon, but still. Uh, and I'm not picking him for the clean sheet. I think that Minnesota, it kind of sucks that they had a buy because yeah. I think that they're starting to show us some consistency 
I think that they're starting, and I hope Christian's not listening because I am not here for how excited he'll be about it, but I think that they're kind of a team to be taken a little seriously. They're not a team that's going to blank, especially if Reynoso is healthy and contributing. So I am not betting against Minnesota by picking up Kai Wagner. I'm betting on Kai Wagner for assists bonus points, etc. And he's still that guy. He still takes qu- some quarter kicks. He still takes some free kicks. He is what you want from a bonus point producing wing back. He and Brooks Lennon, I think, really exemplify what we look at for that, right, from a fantasy perspective. So the both of them are probably slotting into my team this week. And then I'm, I maybe this is as out there as your Orlando thought process. Maybe it's not. But I'm looking at some Houston defenders. I like Griffin yeah. Dorsey. I think there's a, a couple other other players in that back line that you could slot in as well. I do think that that is a, I don't know how to, you know, a decent matchup. I mean, San Jose just scored three goals on the Sounders at home. However, <laughs> Houston are a, a pretty decent looking team right now. And when we look at the home and away matchups, it's, it's hard for me to take road defenders. I think mm-hmm. that Houston could be a decent Maybe not, sh- you know, a hopeful shutout venue. So we'll see how that how that rolls. Uh, some names that I saw in chat. I, I saw McCarthy a lot for keepers. I get that. I promise this isn't a homer thing and this is a, a fantasy thing. But the Sounders have scored in their last two games, one home, one away. So I don't know that clean sheet hunting against them is the best decision. However, like you said, Brandon... McCarthy's 4.9. He's one of the, I think he's the cheapest intended to start starting keeper left in the game. So from a financial standpoint, I see that. Do I confidently say that the Sounders are going to go into the Galaxy and score? No. Could they absolutely pull up a goose egg? (laughs) Yes. They're not scoring well, but they're scoring. So like, I guess I'm not going to... I would not suggest triple stacking, let us say, against no. the Sounders this week. <laughs> I think there's many other viable Galaxy field players. But McCarthy's so cheap, I think it's really hard to pass up. So I do see that. Uh, I see some RSL. I see, uh, you know, again, some Wagner and Lennon shout. So I think that those are definitely some good some good options. Um, but they are some money, I think. Harriel, if you are clean sheet hunting against Minnesota, um, and don't admit that to Christian, I think Harriel is a cheaper alternative to Wagner for a bench play, yep. if that's where your where your mind is going. But uh, also Caleb Wiley is a cheaper alternative to Brooks Lennon if you're looking for that clean sheet hunt there. But yeah, definitely a, a range of of keeper and defender options. Yeah. Let's go ahead um, and move move it. Go ahead, Brandon. Sorry. Oh no, sorry. I was just gonna say, just to add as well, um, Kritsov and Allen for their Miami because they have uh, no Allen in town, yeah. city uh-huh. in town, and uh, city, for lack of a better word, have not looked great under Cushing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and and the one thing I picked up on last week was uh, Kritsov and Allen both cleared a hundred passes, so that's already two bonus points tacked on to whatever score they get which even if they're scored on twice they're still pulling home a three so yeah absolutely as cheap as they are yes i think kritsov is five and allen might be a little bit more yeah Um, no no it's less than that 4.3 i was gonna say he just priced us to 4.3 i think or price there or price down to 4.3 i mean apologies Mm -hmm. uh we are a little more in line, a little more in line as we move into midfielders. I'll go ahead and give you the the names that top my list at this moment. Lucho, even though I would say this is hard to say, a relatively underperforming week for him with a seven because it was just minutes played in a goal, right? That's not yeah. that's not the Lucho we know. We're talking yeah. about all these key passes and bonus points, et cetera, et cetera. For all the Uchos, the Uchos really did underperform this week. They still performed, right? Like a four from a striker isn't terrible, but when they didn't score or get an assist, but it's not good. A seven from a midfielder isn't great, but he was a lot of our captain, and it's still a goal. It's a, you know, so it's yeah. hard to walk away from. He's still in my team this week. Uh, Puj, I've been leaning Puj over Payne still. It's only bitten me once, and I have definitely 
heard of the double of the paint still pooch double being considered for this week given the sounders i take yeah. zero offense to that i personally think that having jovalich is more important and you should just pick one but we'll get into that when we get into strikers and i get on my jovalich soapbox but yeah Pooj is, is who I currently have. Almada was an easy add for me as well. With that home game, he's coming back from national team. It's a Sunday game. It's against Chicago, a team I like him for. So that's definitely someone who was a, an easy add, if you will. I currently, and this we don't quite differ yet, but I currently have Gassig as a bench midi, which is something that's painful for me to do. Mm-hmm. But I... <laughs> really am not trying to in any way bet against Minnesota. It's just that I do still, like you talked in, in the opening, I do like Philly. I think yeah. that they're doing relatively well. I think that he's a player that could do well at home. But he's a lot of money. Is, is there some a better choice? Maybe. And then I am not sure why, but I'm rolling with Evander. I'm keeping Evander in my lineup this week. <laughs> He has been Forsberg from time to time, but I don't know how that off-field drama will present. If it doesn't present at all, I might take Forsberg over Evander. But what's crazy about Evander is he's had a seven two weeks in a row with no yeah. goal contribution yeah. on a home and away. Mm-hmm. That's fascinating to me. I Anyone who listens to this podcast knows that I'm not the deep down stats person, and I don't pretend to be. I don't understand how he can do That is a fantastic point production for yeah. a player who has not contributed to any goal so <laughs> i just you know i did just kind of shit talk lucho for getting the seven but he just he scored a goal evander did nothing yeah picks up a seven so and you've hit the post a couple of times too which he has looked good which is also yeah. painful for me now he has a real striker in as well he has rodriguez is mm-hmm. that gonna help him he is on a price rise in the game which is something that's important to take into account as the players get more and more expensive the rising becomes more difficult right and he is just definitely someone that i think is in form enough to have this week and it's a later game if someone does really well and i'm strapped for another bench spot he's probably one of the first ones i do but that's where i'm sitting right now what are some what what are your feelings about some of those names because like i said we do overlap a little and then who are some names that you're considering that weren't on my list yeah so as far as my list goes, it's uh, I, the first four names are pretty much the exact same. Pooja, Amada, Evander, Gazdak, for all those reasons that you said and more, because yeah. um, just the bonus points. Um, Almada is maybe the one that I am the least convinced about um, out of the four, just solely based on the fact that Almada this season, his production has been more goal-reliant. Mm-hmm. Um, he hasn't scored as many of the quote-unquote key passes that the game is counting. So um, he's the one that I would say I'm faltering on most, not to say that I'm faltering on him in the first place. Um, he's just the one that, out of those four, I have less confidence in, we'll put it that way. Um, the fifth one that I had instead of Lucho, just again from a price perspective, um, and also coming off of last week, is Ojeda. Um, Ojeda could very easily be Lodero, um, depending on who starts. Uh, could even technically be Torres, um, if we're <laughs> bringing that uh, that option up. So, um, just whoever's at the ten for Orlando, um, they Torres less so, but between Lodero and Ojeda, both of them seem to be pretty solid on the bonus points. Um, and again, against Red Bull, who I know traditionally have been very good at shutting down opposition tens. Um, we say that but, a lot. Yeah, but I think in the last, this is something that I've been saying for the last you know half a season or so, is um, ever since Struber left, they haven't been as defensively compact. Um, okay. They are still compact, but um, just looking at it from a goals perspective, they do let one or two in every game. Mm-hmm. So they will still you know, be defensively sound and solid, but um, they'll just have that one moment or two moments in a game where they just shut off completely. And yeah, now you have a 1-1 game and now you have a 2-1 game. Um, 
So just, you know, between those sort of situations, um, I do see inroads for Ojeda in that game, even though history would dictate not to take Ojeda or Lodero um, in that game. Um, going sort of down the list, I know that Tyler in chat mentioned the potential Levin return for St. Louis. Um, on the opposite side of that one, um, just because, again, taking a mid as they're coming back from injury, you never know what happens, could very easily yep. you know, re-injure themselves. Or they could have Jonathan Rodriguez game and score a goal um, and yep. pick up a nine. Um, we're kind of liable to that. But um, as crazy as this is, um, budget picks on the opposite side of that one, Carlos Andres Gomez, who... Right has chipped in a couple of goals so far. Um, mm-hmm. Again, might not start because that front grouping for RSL um, has been somewhat fluid between Baja, Barajas, um, Arango getting in, uh, or well, Arango starting up top, and then it's been a bit of a rotation between Anderson Julio and yep. uh, Hidalgo playing out of position. So um, might not necessarily start, but RSL versus St. Louis, just seems like one of those games where he might pop up with a brace. I don't sure. know. Um, sort of in a similar vein, uh, Matej Klik for DC. Um, I know that Goodness. people will be looking at Montreal and saying that they've done pretty well on the road this season to start. Mm-hmm. Um, seeing as they can't physically play in Montreal on account of Stats Pluto not being winterized, which is always a fun one to, to have to deal with at the start of the season. But... Um, as much as Laurent Courtois has done well um, to keep that Montreal side intact while they're on the road. Um, with the bye week last week, they might be a little bit out of, you know, they might have a little bit more rust than uh, than DC. So it's just sort of building on that thought um, through clicking as an option, especially as Montreal also haven't been defensively solid as much as other teams have. Um, they've been involved in a lot of high-scoring games, especially two weeks ago mm-hmm. against Chicago. So um, maybe trying to catch some of that 4-3 action with Click. Um, and again, they also lost Raheem Edwards to a red card, um, which didn't get served because they were on a bye last week. So yep. um, as much as he probably wouldn't start, <laughs> um, just one less option on the bench for them to, to bring in late in, late in the game. So... You know, maybe click pops up with one or pop up pops up with an assist late on. Yeah, I um, I saw Ojeda's name come up, and I apologize if this isn't something that you're like a hill you're willing to die on, but bear with me. I saw Ojeda's name <laughs> pop up a lot coming into this previous round. I am not well versed in Orlando's midfield. Prior to this round, I look at his stats. I see a four and half a game. Not bad. I see a three. He got subbed early. I see a seven, but he got an assist. So, you know, only two bonus points. Still bonus points, but two. And then I see a two. And I see this name often in Discord by people I don't know and people I do. And I thought, what? What am I missing? Why? What is, what is it about him? Why is this? Because we're clearly anticipating something. There's not a lot of a blueprint laid out in those first four games to say, oh, oh, hey, day. easy. But then he does what people thought he would, it surprised me, and he pulls out a seven with no goal contributions, which is exactly what I was just praising Evander for doing two weeks in a row. Yeah. So what is it about Ojeda in this Orlando situation? Let's ignore the fact that they're playing a notoriously 10 shutting down team in Red Bull. But what is it that made you consider him this week and why do you think he was a popular name for last week? So I think a lot of it comes from his underlying numbers. Um, Tailing in from last season, even though Oscar Pereira had seemed to have some sort of predisposition not to play him, um, in his limited minutes, he was a statistical darling, I would say. Um, put it that way um he does a lot in the limited number of minutes he gets usually and so um 
at least for me, as a fifth mid option to throw in. Um, assuming he gets the start, um, I think there's a lot of leeway in the ceiling that he can hit. And he's um, cheaper. He's 7.8. In that the as well. field of midfielders, that is nice when we're dropping 10s and 11s all over the field, right? Exactly. And, I mean, he just tried to pull up the stats here. Average just under three shots a game. Um, which is one short of a bonus point, I believe. Yeah. Um, key passes he hit. Even the week he had a three, he was one key pass off of a four. Um, so, again, just padding. He seems to be one of those guys that does very well at padding those categories, even if he's not necessarily getting the minutes he should. Sure. Um, and I think part of that maybe is also... Um, some people are no fans I've seen want to see more of him. Yeah. So it's a little bit of that, you know, trying to will the points into existence almost. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Listen, a seven with no goal contributions from midfield is nothing to shake your head at. Yeah. But he definitely proved it right this past round, I guess is, is what I'm saying. But I didn't understand. And again, I never pretend to be a deep stats person. I obviously pay attention to them, but I am not, I am not a deep stats person. And so... Looking at him from a surface level, I didn't get it. He definitely proved me wrong this past round. And kind of like you said, Orlando's midfield, for me, from a fantasy perspective, isn't always consistent. So that makes it hard to choose from as well. I feel like everyone... Last year, it was just all Torres, right? Yeah. Torres, 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 Pereira, maybe, but mostly just Torres. And this year, I think there's a lot more options in that team. And they are a good team, barring that one game they played at Miami, I think that they're a productive team, especially at home, so <laughs> that does make sense to me. Uh, some other midfield names that either Reed's contributed or I've seen, I guess we it's not fair to not say Lewis Morgan kind of just did a hat trick, but he's on the road, he's not even the best midfielder on that team with Forrest Rick back, but still, it's unfair to not mention the name, but yeah. like I said, he's, he's traveling, uh, I don't know that he is the most you know, bankable, bank, bankable person to, to pick up for this week. Uh, let me let me proffer this on on Ojeda very quickly. Yeah. Um, me. So just pulling it off of uh, FB Ref, which is a wonderful resource that um, I will plug right now. Um, he has so he has the most shots on target for ninety um, on the entire okay. roster for Orlando. Um, One point seven two shots per ninety. Uh, next closest regular starter is Muriel, but he only has just over a shot per game on target. So, you know, there's that extra leeway where he does take a lot of shots and they're generally on target, which logically dictates more goals. Whether they come or not, that's another thing that you have to debate. Uh, he yeah. does take corners as well. Um, so there's been a little bit of a split between him and Lodero when they're both on the pitch, but Lodero, or sorry, Ojeda seems to be the more primary taker, if you will. Um, 21 to 14 is that split, so about a, what, 60-40 split in favor of Ojeda. Yeah. Um, and he also leads the side, or sorry, second um, for the side. Muriel beats him just slightly um, for shot creating actions, which is what FB ref it's the FB, FB ref sort of equivalent to what the game is considering key passes. Um, and just to briefly delve into that, because I don't want to make this into a stat conversation. That's um, okay. I'm it's... not going to make it into a stat conversation, so you should. <laughs> um, very briefly speaking, a shot creating action is the two actions that precede a shot on goal. So right. pass, pass, goal. That's those two shot, act shot creating actions right there. Uh, but it's also not limited to passes. So... Um, what we were mentioning earlier, dribble, pass, shot, that mm. all counts. Yep. If you're fouled and then a shot from a free kick is on goal, that counts. So sort of in that space, Muriel and Ojeda are very well clear ahead of the entire rest of the roster. Um, Thor Halson is third, but he's about an action and a half behind them. Um, so... Not that that should convince you, necessarily speaking, um, because also with, you know, Christian and I have had this conversation at length about the eye test versus the stats test, sure. but Ojeda is one that I think 
passes both with flying colors. Yeah, um, and that's that's a rarity. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank you for that. Thank you for. Oh, I mean, I might be an Ojeda convert now, so oh. I, uh, <laughs> I I I see where you're where you're going with that. Strikers, let's talk strikers. I have a soapbox. I'll wait for my turn. Brandon, who do you like this week? I'll give you your soapbox and I'll leave that third pick uh, <laughs> hidden for now. Um, my first two picks were uh, Ben Teke, again, for the same reason that um, Montreal, although have done well on the road, they haven't necessarily kept the goals out. They've just been outscoring their opponents for wins. Sure. Um, so Ben Teke, again, also coming off a goal. Um not that I'm annoyed at the fact that he didn't have his first week hat trick, um, but even without it, he picked up a four against Inter Miami, which for a striker, I know we said it about Kuchu as well, but um, while it's not great, it's not bad. Um, you have the floor there, which you might not get with another option. Um, the other name that I was going to throw out there is Bernadeski. Um, no yeah. Insigne means a little bit more of a role for Bernardeschi up top, I would assume. Um, yep. At least if John Bergman doesn't do a John Bergman and completely change the team because of one sure. missing player. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but again, Bernardeschi's floor has also been solid through the first couple of weeks. Um, four, a three, a six, a four, and an eight. The six and an eight at home, so them carrying through at BMO this weekend against SKC um, to me dictates at least a decent score, if not a good one. Um, yeah. And then because I had a whole bunch of different picks than you did, um, I'll just briefly go over Rodriguez as well, I think. Sure. Um, for the very similar reason of taking a Vander. If you don't take a Vander, maybe you take Rodriguez as your way into that Portland attack. Um, and then one that I think got thrown out in the differentials group chat last week, um, not to steal it away from the differentials, sure. but um, whoever, there's a Texas Derby. So um, yeah. both sides of that Texas Derby, I think you could argue there's a way in there. Um, I don't necessarily feel strong for it. I know sure. the guys will probably be mad at me for mentioning it here on the pod, but um, I do think you could argue that if you weren't convinced by Austin last week, there's no reason that their defense should convince you this week. And with sure. Musa and Fur doing well, both of them, um, maybe there's something there that you could look at. Although, again, that's not one of my primary options this week. I uh, I I hear you on the J Rod as much as it is painful for me. He picked up a nine, so he got two bonus points. He went a full ninety. He scored a goal. It was a good goal. Uh, heading up to Vancouver, who's been a I, I don't know if it's fair to call them sh a shaky defense. They're they're not shutouting. Portland is clicking. I think, you know, he's the striker everyone tried to make Anthony be in fantasy, and he, he wasn't. So. <laughs> I hear that he is a road striker, so he he's not in my team, but I do I do find his opening week stats interesting. I think he's a name that will come up more, and I'll let Reed do it because I won't want to talk about him. But I think it's viable for me. Denis Bowanga made it into my team. I understand that it's a road game. I am the person that always says you know the big the big hits don't hit twice, but I think that at Colorado, yes, it's altitude. I still feel like he's a he's a striker I want on my team this week. I should also preface by saying, and I think you probably feel the same based on your list, this is a big striker week. Like there are yeah. I would take six strikers this week if I could. <laughs> there are a lot of a lot of viable striker names this week. Yeah. I think that it's not that you can't go wrong, but I think there are a lot of names to pick from, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Bowanga is mine. I am considering Suarez, depending on how Miami 
present, right? I think if we're worried about rotation for the upcoming, you know, Champions Cup, Champions League, it's Miami and Columbus, right? Those are the two the two teams to pick that you would anticipate. I don't know if they're going to rotate. They got the butts kick. Suarez looked terrible, but he's been in good form. He's definitely a name I'm considering. I like the shouts for Gigi. Uh, Yakimaki's for Atlanta. It's a late game, so he could also be a viable scrub if you need him to. He's also a really good striker who just had the week off and was, you know, on international duty. <laughs> I think that Benteke makes sense. I think that Chicho Arango at RSL makes sense for sure. I am not sold on the Benteke ness. I I don't like the coming back from injury. <laughs> The hat trick was a hat trick, but it was a red card hat trick to me. That's yeah. an asterisk hat trick. Absolutely. But I get the pick. I have the matchup, all the things. Totally makes sense to me. I will have Jovalich in my team this week. Here's my soapbox. Everyone else can log out. <laughs> you don't want to hear it. That's fine. Is he the best striker in the game? No. Has he had a hat trick yet? Also no. Like I said, catching a hat trick in a bottle... <laughs> It's not an easy thing to do. <laughs> Jovalich is probably not going to score a hat trick, but guess what? If he was, he'd do it against my Seattle Sounders. So I think, you know, he has scored in every game so far this season. In every game so far this season, he's had a, at least one or two bonus points, except for one game, where instead of bonus points, he got an assist and a goal. He scored in five straight. They're at home against a weak Sounders team with a rotated back line and a rotated midfield, and their starting keeper freshly back who led in three goals last week. I don't know <laughs> what this poor guy, except for have a hat trick, I don't know what Jovovich has to do to be in more teams. And yeah. again, as soon as I go on a soapbox about someone, they almost always shit the bed. So yeah. I do feel bad. <laughs> For him and what that's going to mean for his point production. But I think no one that we, and I apologize if anyone we had on has said it casually, but no one that we've had on the podcast or read has said his name <laughs> in a convincing way so far this season. But the dude scored every week. And again, eights, nines, tens, like that's not, it's not a Denis Bawanka 19. It's not a, you know, Giamaki's hat trick. But I think that it's a little bit of a disservice that this guy, who has been the super sub of all fantasy super subs, right, the last two years, that, that he's come off the bench and sco he's scored so consistently as a sub last year. It was crazy. I remember having a conversation last season with Blaine where Blaine was trying to convince me that he's going to take him anyways, even though he knows yeah. he won't start. Because he sh he's so statistically likely to come in and score. And I was trying to talk Blaine out of it. So the roles have really switched. However, I think that he is a player that should come up with the GGs and the Bentec. Like I said, it's just like the hat trickness. It's like, oh, you have yeah. to score a hat trick? I don't want you in my team. <laughs> sure, I get that logic too. But he... He's on, you know, he was on your list. I appreciate you you, you hit him as though you were going to give me the moment. He's on my <laughs> list. He's on Reed's list because I wouldn't shut up about it in our group text over the weekend. <laughs> but it just surprises me that more people haven't really given him a look. I think, gosh, I feel like last week he was only owned by like 8% or something. Like it was a, low, yeah. it was a low number. And so. But still only 9.78. Yeah, so anyways, <laughs> like I said, he'll absolutely shit the bed and I'll have to eat this next week. But up yeah. until I'm saying this, he has been an incredibly viable, consistent striker. <laughs> and I just don't understand why more people haven't given him the credit he deserves. So anyways, uh, some other names, I think, I don't think it's fair to not mention Cucho. Yeah. Uh, he's not in my team. He's not in your team. No. He's not in Reed's team. <laughs> However, he's still Cucho. I think that he could go to Nashville. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a tiny bit worried about Columbus rotation. Are they going to prepare for the week game during the weekend? I don't really think they will, but there's a chance, right? Or minutes. And, yes, or minutes. But Ramirez is hurt. So mm -hmm. are, 
to, you know what I mean? I don't know. We're, we're yeah. over predicting. There's really no way to know until it happens, but I could definitely see him coming into that venue and doing well. I think he's probably not going to be picked above some of the home strikers like the Chicho's, like the Yova Liches, like the Bernadette, the Benteke's, right? Because they're home strikers. But it would not surprise me coming off a four that he shows up and produces, I mean, right? Uh, another name I haven't seen is Carranza. And I'm going to change my voice because there's a baby room. Uh, is Carranza for Philly again? I'm not trying to stomp on Minnesota, but he you know, has produced really well and is a very viable fantasy option. So I think there's strikers to feast upon this week. Whichever three you land on, you know, Godspeed. I think that there's so many viable home choices. This is where we'll check back next week to a red card and a minus two for y'all, Lich. Absolutely. (laughs) Uh, But as far as who we are trusting the most, Captain Picks, Brandon, who do you like? I have mine on Pooj. Yes. I, too, have mine on Pooj. And it's painful. I don't like it. Like, I don't feel good about it. <laughs> I don't enjoy betting against the Sounders. Uh, but I'm gonna. And a part of it, I will say, I don't know how you feel. Part of it is the form. It's the yeah. form of both Ricky Pooj and the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. I would hear Almada. Almada is Reed's armband. Uh, I know you weren't super sold on him, but no. <laughs> that matchup is tasty. I complete. I definitely absolutely agree with you no. that the performance hasn't quite been what we'd think it would be from him with how the point structure is this year. But I, I like Atlanta. I like him. I like Atlanta. I like the matchup. I yep. think that that is a good place to go. As far as strikers, a captaining Gigi isn't isn't where my head goes, but I could see that as well. Just because, like I said, Atlanta looks good. They've done well. It's a good matchup. I could see it. But I'm going, like Fez just said, chat, I'm going for Pooch for the floor and the matchup. So You know what you have to do now after that soapbox, though, right? <laughs> eat, eat a bucket hat? I would Captain only Yolich. eat a bucket hat. No, I won't do it. I won't do it. I gotta make this. I'll do it the round after Champions League cutoff ends. Okay, when you're sitting at 22, I just want to make it in a Champions League first window. I can't captain him now. I'll do it next time. Landon, who's your captain, buddy? Who's your captain? Are we gonna go with Almada? Daddy, daddy, daddy. Oh, I'm your captain, daddy. Oh, Reed, Captain Reed. Uh, well, now that we have a cute toddler Roo and a MLS Fantasy boss, uh, let's go through some plugs. Brandon, do you have any plugs for us this week? We'll throw it over to the Mega Reference, I think. Um, yeah. You're home for all your injury news, your international duty news from last week, uh, suspensions uh, new this year, and shout out to, I believe it was Isaac who put it in, uh, by teams and double game week teams are now on the Mega Reference as well. Love it. Um, so check that out. Uh, safe scrubs as well, um, especially this year with the sad, sad passing of the Madranda rule. Yeah. Your, right. uh, your bench scrubs will be ever more important to make sure that they're not in the match day squad. Um, so there's a list of that there as well. If we're ever on a bye week without enough scrubs or somehow you need to have four scrubs in your team, which probably means you, your bench did pretty well um if you if you need that fourth scrub um the mega reference is there to, to give you that information yep and i will just plug kind of as a branch off the community discord community how vital that is to just having less of a headache in your game week i will also plug the mlsfi community and our boss breed Reed, do you have any plugs? Landon, do you have any plugs? Wait, what, what, what do you want to plug? My board. Your board, okay. Your yeah. board. Then. Oh, I bet Landon's board is amazing. Yep. Coming to a city you used to. I have wild well cards uh, on my board. Th- Brandon, thank you so much for I have wild well cards. Landon, thank you so much for joining us tonight in a much less but 
equally cute fashion. I got one. Uh, <laughs> if you have not checked out Brandon on Discord, please connect. And as always, to you all, good luck. Good luck, everyone. Good luck. I have wow cracks. Hi, bud. How are you? I have I have wow cracks. Good. Are you being a helper for Mama? Recording stopped. Are you being a helper? Hey, Who's what's your uh, what's your sidekick name? Daddy. No, no, no. What's your sidekick name? And then no, no. Kid Chaos. Kid Chaos. That's right, Kid Chaos. Kid Chaos. So you are not helping. That's so great. 